Hey everybody, this is Walter with Access Electric and we're here today again with uh, Jason Nab of Ecoflex uh, Lighting Controls and he's going to be giving us a little demo on how to set up his Ecoflex product. So uh, Jason, get us started on, on your product. Yeah, yeah. so the, uh, the way we do things, we break it down into different types of products, right? So we've got controllers, which are relays and power packs, we call them controllers. Uh, we've got switches for your manual on, off and dimming. We've got our occupancy sensors uh, so that we can comply again with Title 24 that we were talking about earlier. And then we have daylight sensors and different types of each type of control. Uh, so our controllers, this guy here is a phase adaptive dimmer. So it goes up to 600 watts of LED. Uh, it can do forward and reverse phase dimming. The nice thing for contractors is there's nothing in the field that you have to make adjustments to go back and forth between forward or reverse phase. It's also nice for engineers because it does both forward and reverse phase so it can handle ELV, MLV, TRIAC. The engineers don't have to figure out what kind of fixture am I gonna specify now, how does my controller has to fit with that type of fixture. This guy automatically figures it out and adjusts accordingly. Uh, then we've also got single zone controllers. So this guy here is a zero to 10 volt controller. So with, we have our phase dimmer and then we've also got our zero to 10 volt dimming capabilities. This one has a knockout mount we also have the same exact relay available in a strap mount. So you can either do zone control or you can do fixture by fixture control. Mount this inside the fixture and we've got a little strap on there in order to be able to hold it into the fixture or you can get rid of that strap and mount it into a box loose. Uh, these guys both handle up to 11 and a half amps. So it doesn't do a full 20 amp, but with LED, you rarely get up to a, a 20 amp in a individual space. So that's how we accomplish single zone of zero to 10 volt dimming. And then this product here is a newer product for us. So this handles daylight harvesting for Tile 24. So we previously talked about our primary, our secondary and our non-daylight zone. Uh, so that daylight zone is defined by the window height, right? So it's the height of the window plus half the height of the window wide of the, the window space. Uh, that's your primary zone and then basically copy and paste that into the space is your secondary daylight zone. So this guy here has three different 0 to 10 volt outputs but one relay. So in an open office space you're going to have a primary daylight zone, a, non, a secondary daylight zone, and a non-daylight zone but you want those all to turn on and off together. You want it to be simple to the end user to understand that hey this is all one control zone but I do have to have separate daylight harvesting. The nice thing about daylight harvesting is it should just automatically happen and the end user never notices it, right? So with this product, we've got the three different zero to 10 volt outputs, one for your primary, one for your secondary, one for your non-daylight zone. But when you hook up a two button switch to it or a single button switch to it, you can dim everything up and down together. The daylight zones only go up to as high as the daylight sensor will allow and then you can turn everything on and off together. Instead of having three switches on the wall that you have to try and manually dim to a similar level, which is very frustrating for an end user. So the whole space will come on with the one switch. Absolutely. But the three zones will dim separately. Correct. Okay. Through the daylight sensor. On their own. Absolutely. Uh, we also have smaller units here. So this unit can tie into, a, let's say, a VAV box or in a hospitality suite, we can tell you what a VA, VA box is. So a VAV box is a device that measure or allows air to flow into a space. Okay. So when it's part of the HVAC system, just about every single space has a, a VAV box. Some VAV boxes would control three or four office spaces, or you could even have two in a large open office space. Uh, so this little guy will wire into that VAV box and provide a contact closure when it's linked to an occupancy sensor. So when somebody walks into any one of those three offices, the VAV box will open, allowing air to flow into those spaces. So that is what we call demand control ventilation, which is using occupancy of a space to control airflow into the, the area. And then we talked a little bit about controlled receptacles earlier. So this is our con split controlled receptacle. The top half is constant hot, so the, the relay in this does not turn that side off. And then you have a switched receptacle on the bottom side. So it's a split controlled. We do have the little NEC required power symbol on the bottom of that. And we do actually also put arrows on there pointing to the side that's controlled to make it a little bit easier for an end user to understand which side to plug a space heater in versus plugging in their computer. Always plug your computer into the unswitched portion of it. Uh, the other nice thing about this product is on the back side here with our wires, we have our hot, neutral, and ground that's very common with all of our standard receptacles that we're used to seeing. 
but then we also have a load wire. So in an office space, we were talking before, you have to have a controlled receptacle, which is this guy, within six feet of an uncontrolled receptacle. So this can wire to other receptacles downstream that don't have a relay built into them, but they're labeled controlled without having to put this in every single spot. Mm -hmm. So again, trying to make it as cost effective as possible for the end user. And how much current will that relay supply? So this is a, a 15 amp relay okay. built into this. We are currently working on a 20 amp model as well, so that should be out in the next few months. Good. So that's pretty much it for our controllers. Uh, we have different types of switches. So this is our original switch. And just looking at the back side to remember which side's up and down on it. It's a standard Decora switch, which is nice for an end user. They understand what a Decora switch does. They have those in their house. They understand how it works. So a press and release turns the lights on and turns the lights off, but a press and hold can dim the lights up and dim the lights down. So you see there that the light is going up and down. So it meets our Tile 24 requirement of having a switch in the space and that switch being able to dim the lights up and down. So that's the nice thing about the, the switches. The other nice thing about this particular model is it is battery free. So on the back side here, there's no compartment at all. So it's very rare to have wireless that is also battery free. This device will last up to 250,000 operations without having to worry about this. So it's gonna last 40 to 50 years in your building, unless you get a little kid that wants to sit there and play with the switch all day long, uh, which does happen on rare occasion. Uh, the other style of switch that we have, again, same type of Decora style, right? Uh, but we have a battery in this one. You can see that this one is significantly thinner. Uh, which allows us to have a battery and again a press and release turns on and turns off but a press and hold will dim up and dim down so this is our two button version so if i if i use that in conjunction with this and yes. i turn the light the space and the lighting on yep and i try to dim up will it dim all three zones up it'll dim all three zones up until you hit the maximum of that daylight harvesting right so with our daylight zone uh, sensor in there it's gonna to say to the primary daylight zone, you can only go to 60% right now. The secondary zone maybe only to 80%, but the non-daylight zone, it'll allow to go up to 100. So as you press and hold this up, you'll see all three zones go up in unison until they hit their maximum, and then the other ones will keep going. Uh, when it comes down, it'll come down relatively similar until it kind of hits that same spot and then they'll all go down together. Okay. So in this convenient. switch, yeah, very convenient for sure. And so this switch has a, a two button option. We also have a, a four button option, so you can do two zones. So if you're doing a conference room and you've got a light above the table or you've got down lights around the table, you can have two zones of control with that. Or we've also got an eight button switch where you can have up to four zones of control. Or the other thing we can do with this uh, three zone controller is it can control three different zones as well and you can pair an individual switch to each zone. So I can dim each zone up and down together, and then I can have a master switch at the bottom there that's gonna take them all up and down together. The other switch that we have here is a key card switch, which is used quite a bit in hospitality. So as you enter your guest room suite, you put your key in, turns on your air conditioning, turns on your lights, turns on your controlled receptacles. When you leave, you pull the key card out, 30 seconds later, all of your receptacles that are controlled, your lighting, uh, and your HVAC turns off. So trying to keep that energy usage again at a lower energy use. Uh, great use for hotel rooms, great use. Uh, then we've also got a big thing is the occupancy sensors that we talked about earlier as well. So we have two different styles of ceiling mount occupancy sensor. So this occupancy sensor looks kind of a little bit like a UFO. Yeah. Uh, so the reason that it looks like a UFO is because we have solar panels around this. So again, Echoflex's thought process, try and use as few batteries as possible while still being completely wireless. So there are no wires on this. And the great thing about wireless is you can move this sensor easily, right? So I can, if I get it into a space, it's mounted to a, a T-bar ceiling and I wanna be able to move that from one place to another because it's not picking up a person in a certain area, just swap the ceiling tiles. So very flexible in the installation. Uh, so this will last up to nine days in complete darkness without the use of a battery, uh, which handles about 99% of our applications. So it's awesome to not have to worry about putting batteries in the landfill uh, and going up in that maintenance of replacing batteries all the time as well. Mm. So this also will handle up to a 2000 square foot space, or we can do high bay applications as well when you get into that more industrial type of application or warehouse application, uh, up to 40 feet high, 6,300 square foot of coverage from one sensor. The other sensor we offer 
is this guy here, which is a little bit nicer looking. Uh, it has two solar panels, so this can do vacancy without a battery. So the occupancy and vacancy, if you're not familiar with what those are, uh, occupancy, when you walk in, the lights react and turn on automatically. Right. Vacancy, you have to manually turn the lights on. Both occupancy and vacancy, the lights turn off automatically when you leave the space. So the other thing that California- so manual on, auto off. Correct, for vacancy. The other thing that 2016 allowed was partial on. So when I walk into the space, the lights come on to somewhere between 30 to 70%. So they come on partially, but it has to be evenly illuminated. So it, everything has to turn on to a certain percentage. You can't do the older style, the 2008 code, which will allow the checkerboard. So this light turns on, this light doesn't. Right. Uh, so it has Maybe to come switching. on. Exactly. So you have to have dimming and everything dims to that certain level. Uh, so if you're doing partial on or occupancy, you do need a battery for this unit. It is a 1632, which is a very common coin cell battery. Uh, but if you're doing vacancy, you don't need a battery for this. And how long will that battery last? That battery is going to last you around five years. Okay. Uh, so the other nice thing about these two units, which is very different from other wireless controls, is we do offer these in dual technology. So dual technology means you have one technology and a second technology that then holds it on. So one to turn it on, one to hold it on. So we use passive infrared, which is a very common technology in occupancy sensors for that initial trigger. So when you walk in, the passive infrared for us turns on a microphone. So we're using audio for our secondary technology. So if it's hearing something in the space, it will keep the lights on. The other nice thing is if you have, let's say a classroom, somebody leaves a radio on over the summer, it's not going to keep the lights on all summer. After one hour of no passive infrared movement, it turns that uh, microphone off and then turns the lights off after it's timeout. So hour and 15 minutes, all the lights will still turn off even if there's noise constantly in the space. Hmm. Another common occupancy sensor, which takes that switch and sensor into one device, is our wall switch sensor. So this is a battery powered device. There's no wires to it whatsoever. Uh, so I can also, if I've got this hooked up to here, so I can turn my lights on and off, and again, still get my press and hold to dim the light up and down. And I've got my occupancy sensor built into this switch. Uh, this unit cost is actually less than just the ceiling sensor on its own, and you get the switch and the sensor built into the same device. And it's wirelessly, again, communicating to my controller. The big thing to remember for the contractor when they're installing this and programming it is this is two separate devices. And the reason we do that when you're doing controlled receptacles, you want the occupancy sensor to be occupancy for the controlled receptacle, but you might want vacancy or partial on for your lighting in a small office. So that occupancy sensor is paired independently also because we don't want the switch to control the receptacle. We only want that to control the lighting. Right. So when I walk in, my receptacles turn on automatically and my lights either don't turn on or they turn on to let's say 50%. And then I can manually dim the lights up and down from the switch beyond that without affecting the receptacle at all. Okay, two units in one. Absolutely, and it's cost effective. Yeah. Uh, then we've also, and this is also available in that same audio dual technology as well. The battery life on that's roughly around the 15 year battery life. Daylight harvesting. You'll see that this looks very similar to our ceiling mount occupancy sensor for a reason. We try to kind of keep things aesthetically the same. Uh, so this guy here does your daylight harvesting. This is a closed loop application. So the difference between, for those that don't know, closed loop and open loop is two different ways of doing daylight harvesting. So if you're doing a closed loop application, you're looking at the artificial light or the electric light in the space combined with the natural light coming in from outside. And you're trying to maintain a certain light level at the task plane. So you'd put a light meter down here on the desk, you dim your lights to a certain area and say, okay, I wanna set this as my daylight level. And so this would look at the difference between, or the combination of your electric light and your natural light coming into the space and maintain a certain light level. Uh, the other nice thing about these units, the nicer looking sensors is we can magnetize them right to the T-bar grid as well. Okay. So quick, easy, simple install. I don't recommend that in the yeah. school, uh, but Can office spaces, off? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely in schools, but in office spaces, they're, they're great for easy installation. Also in warehouses, I had one contractor who was doing a mezzanine, went through and just basically popped these guys onto the 
the strut on the bottom there and easy installation for them to go through. No wires, you get up to about an 80 to 300 foot installed range on the wireless communication. So really easy for them to go through, pop those sensors up, put a switch at the aisle and everything worked perfectly for them. Hmm. Quick, easy installation. Uh, then we've also got our open loop sensor. So open loop is when you're only looking outside and you're affecting the electric light output on the inside solely based on the outside. 90% of the time we use closed loop just because it's the best application. The areas where you'd use open loop are skylights. Uh, so skylights, sometimes it's easier to look outside and adjust the lighting because your skylight's 40 feet in the air. It's hard to get an accurate reflected light back up 40 feet in the air to your daylight sensor. Uh, or also for sometimes classrooms, if you're in a science classroom, they have really shiny black desks that causes light to bounce all over the place. So it's hard to get a even illumination at the task plane when all that light is bouncing around. So it's easier to use open loop for those types of applications. So this guy here, sticky mounted directly to the window mullion and looking outside and affects the artificial light in the space based on your natural light. Outside. So if I have uh, lights around my skylights, so I have 13 skylights, yep. uh, would I use something like this like on, on the fixtures around the skylight and this would adjust these and based those on, fixtures based on the light outside? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. So we can do it based on the zone because the skylight zones are a little bit different than your side lit daylight zones where you don't have a primary and a secondary, you just have the one side lit zone and that is 70% uh, of the height of the ceiling. So then you would just basically, you're taking whatever that height is, let's say it's 10 feet, seven feet around that is gonna be your skylight zone. So you can do one of those per zone, or you can put one in every fixture. And if it's a retrofit and you don't wanna run extra zero to 10 volt wires from spot to spot, and you can put one in every fixture and then they will be adjusted through that daylight sensor. So this video has gotten a little bit long, so we're going to end this video here and we'll come back one more time and uh, Jason is going to show us how to program uh, this light to one of these switches and we can see how that process works. So again, if you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to our channel. And until the next time, have a great day.